Hey, welcome back to another video. We're talking about templates in Ableton Live this week. This is part one of several. I'm gonna show you the template that I created for our worship band in Ableton and show you how you can make a template for yourself. It's not hard at all and it's gonna save you hours and hours of work. So uh, I could talk all about it, but maybe it'd be easier just to show you. So we're gonna jump into a screen recording and I'm gonna show you how I use templates in Ableton Live. Before you watch the screen capture that I just finished recording, I realized I went really fast in talking about Ableton and the template that I used. If you've never used Ableton, it might be a little bit confusing, and I'm sorry if that is the case. I hope this is clear, I hope it's helpful, and uh, stay tuned for part two coming out soon. I just pulled up Ableton Live. This is Ableton Live 10 Suite and you're looking at uh, some tracks on a timeline in arrangement view. You can go up here to this section and use a little looking glass thing and click and pull up or down to zoom in and out. You can also now, uh, this is a newer feature, if you are on a, if you have a trackpad with multi-touch, you can pinch to zoom and squeeze to pull out. You can also hit the plus or the minus button to go in or out. Um, I've populated this with tracks already. I'll show you how I do that in a second. If you want to watch a video of me actually like making this and going really like a 30 minute video of how I actually did all of this and this, um, let me know and I can, uh, maybe I'll put that on YouTube. Maybe I'll link to this, a longer form of uh, able time as I like to call it in another video, but you don't want to see me drag tracks in. I'll show you what I do, but eh, it doesn't matter. Okay, so let us let me just kind of walk through my template here first. Uh, when normally this is open, and all of these tracks are already here, but there's nothing in the arrangement view. So I already have the tracks listed out. You can see that they're all routed to different places too. There's one and two, there's five and six, there's eight for bass, three and four loops, uh, there's piano, it, it goes out nine, um, pads are in seven, there's midi, the, so we use Dante for our routing, and right now I don't have it plugged into any Dante devices or controllers, so you can't see what's happening, uh, it's not going to route that way right now, but if I was plugged into our system at church, uh, using Dante virtual sound card and the controller, then all of these would be patched I have um, 10 outputs that I use. So what this allows us to do is to send things in different groupings to different places. And I actually have an updated template of this with buses, and I'll show you that in the next video when I added keys, live keys to my rig, playing keys with Ableton as well. So there are software instruments and Ableton racks, instrument racks that are playing keys live. I used buses. I'll show you how to do that later, but this is very good for just tracks. And this is what I'd used Ableton for a long time, uh, for almost eight months. This is how I used it every weekend. I um, built a set that I liked with tracks that I liked, and then I deleted all the tracks and saved it as a template. And so that's how you can do this. Uh, we use tracks from multitracks.com. These are WAV files that we downloaded and I've drug onto this timeline in arrangement view. So this weekend that uh, was from October the 6th, we did It Is Finished. We did Hallelujah Here Below. We did There Is A Cloud. And we did see a victory, very elevation worship weekend. Uh, you can see that we've changed time several times in this too. There's a four four. One, two, vamp, two. There's a three four. One, two, three. And there's a six eight. One, two. So and um. One, two. And another 4-4. Four, four. So you can see in arrangement view, it looks just like any other doll. Uh, also, some of these tracks are hidden because they are in a group. If you want to put tracks in a group, all you have to do is highlight said tracks and hit Command G. Um, or you can go right here to, yeah, there it is, Edit and Group Tracks. 
It's good to learn keyboard shortcuts, though. So Command G is group. So I grouped all the electric guitars together. I grouped some acoustic instruments together. I have five keys channels. And that just makes things easier and cleaner when I've got all the tracks in. And I do that. Let me show you how I drag these tracks in. Let's say we want to add another song at the end. Um, let's do... I'm going to come up over here to my file browser here and I've got a folder called loops and let's say we wanted to do um, let's see what's a good what's a good track we could do how about ain't no grave there's ain't no grave from Bethel um, 74 beats per minute and so I'm just going to come here to a measure and I'm going to uh, right click and say add locator and I'm just going to do this because it helps me remember where I am uh, ain't no grave that's 74 and I'm going to insert a time signature change just to just to make sure okay good we're on 4-4 four, four. okay first thing I do after I mark that I'm going to come down here to this track where it says master and I'm going to pull this up I'm going to hit the A key to show automation where is that here? I think it's under view. Automation mode. A. I'm going to change. There are several ways that you can do this. You can make a master tempo track. A lot of people do that. I, because of the way that I make these in a template, um, I just change the master tempo to work. And so Ain't No Grave is 74 beats per minute. And so what I'm going to do is uh, click to create a marker. And then I'm going to click again and make another one. And I'm just going to drag this to 74. You can set your minimum and your maximum to make this easier. But now it's 74. And now when I drag something from Ain't No Grave onto this timeline, it's going to look correct. So I'm going to grab the click. And you can see, if I zoom into the timeline, if I turn the click on, There you go. Everything is, is, is slammed to the timeline. That is good, good news. And so literally, I just go through and drag these tracks and line them up with that. I do all the ones that I want, all the ones that I might need. Um, I even put drums in there just for reference or for practice and you want to hear something. It's easier to do it that way. Uh, you could add the MP3 or whatever. But this is a normal template for me. So... I create a marker, I make sure I'm in the right time signature, I change the master track with automation, and it's on song tempo. If you click on this, it might be on something else like painting or speaker on, or global groove amount, but you need it to be on song tempo. Um, and so once, it, once you do that, once it remembers that, so it's not a big deal, but we're on song tempo, it's good news. There you go. So I just literally do this for the rest of these. I drag in what I want. Now, below this at the bottom, you'll notice I have two more tracks here. One says MIDI pad and one is click MIDI. And those are for me to add uh, MIDI click sounds and pads into this mix. Uh, the click, we don't really use the click in Ableton. There's another click that everyone likes that, that we sort of made at church years ago and we just keep using it. And so what I've done is, uh, thanks to one of my friends at work, whose name is Joey. Maybe I'll get Joey to come on some videos and uh, talk about stuff because he's awesome and great at Ableton stuff. Um, he made these MIDI clips and there's one for each time signature, and they're one measure long. And if I open this, you can see it is just a drum rack. And I've added the right sounds here and here. And there's one for a six eight click as well. And let me just let me just solo this so you can hear it. It is abrasive and noisy but uh the drummer likes it everybody in the band likes it because it you, you know where the one is it's really helpful and so i actually run both clicks together i have a midi click and this click and you actually hear both of them one, two, and you'll hear intro two three 
So on this song, Sea of Victory, it's kind of slow, and so uh, it's actually doing double time on that click. This click is just hitting all the downbeats, and so it's actually really helpful to keep you together. One, two, intro, two. So I actually run two click channels. Now, MIDI pad is right here. Again, my friend Joey made pads in all of the keys that you would need, and this is just going to loop endlessly if I drag it out. So I'm going to grab this one that's in the key of B flat. And I'm going to change the output to one and two so you can hear it. And I'm going to solo this. So we've got a pad. It's got lots of verb on it. Super long trail. I've got a, a thing here for the uh, filter. I've got all of this stuff. I can add chorus. Super easy. It's just a pad and it's playing a MIDI chord. You can see right here, here's what it's playing, these notes. And uh, if I want to continue to loop it, I can just drag it. I also, when we talk about session view, you can see these right here. Um, sometimes they just auto uh, loop forever. So we'll talk about that uh, either at the end of this video or in the next video. So that's what I use for my tracks. I took one of the multi-track sessions that that I liked that had the most inputs that we used and I again deleted everything out of the set except the tracks and I saved it as a template and it was pretty easy and now every week I just open this template and I drag in the songs from this file browser for the song that I want to do. Now some people like to do this. You can take if we were doing Ain't No Grave, you could take the Ain't No Grave file right here. Yeah, this one. And you could drag this into Ableton, into the arrangement view. And it would stack all those tracks below this. I don't do this. And I know a lot of people like to do this, and here's why I don't do it. Because I like to use arrangement view and session view. And if I took every project and drug it into Ableton, which you can do, it will slam all the tracks below, and then you can like move your clicks up and all that stuff. I There's plenty of videos online of people doing this. It's completely fine, and I understand why they do it. But I don't like to do that because you have, you. have I would have, let's see if I had one, two, three, four songs. Each one of these has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's... 14, 15, 16, 21. There's tw I use about 20 tracks potentially per song. And some of them have even more than that that I don't use. So that would be 20, 40, 60, 80. That'd be 80 tracks basically on this. If I went to session view, I would have to scroll through 80 tracks to see that in session view. And I don't want to see that. So I do it this way. Uh, it's a little bit tedious because you're dragging each thing in, but there's there's a method to the madness, and honestly, it's helpful for me to methodically go through and drag all those things in. Um, I have them color coded, and so when you when you color the the master over here, um, you can see they're all just all the colors you can do. If you right click, it automatically makes the uh, tracks the same color. So so that's super handy that all the tracks are there and they're color coded. I can see like drums and loop or that. There's the bass color. Here's sort of my acoustic and electric instruments. There's piano and keys, choir, vocal effects, and these mini pads. Click and guide or white. Like it's it's easy for me to remember where I am. And that method has been beneficial for me. Also, I'm using around nine channels of output routing. A lot of people that do the drag in the multi-track session in here and, li and line up all the tracks are using like a left-right output. And so it's easy for them to just make all the tracks, select them all and flip them to the right and move the click and cues up to a track that's in the left. But I'm using nine outputs in Dante and I don't want to do that for every track. Uh, in my next video template that I show you when we get to um, busing and routing, I made this even easier to switch when I'm not using Dante because uh, sometimes I'm building sets 
like this just in my home office or at the at my office at work and I'm not connected to Dante so I made it even easier to preview tracks and then get them back onto Dante. So for me routing and consistency are the most important things. Routing, consistency. That's what matters to me when it comes to making sets in Ableton. So as you can see it's it's not that difficult. Again, if you want to know more about um, just like making tracks, uh, how I actually like dra drag, if you want to watch me drag tracks in and talk about building them in session view, um, I will load a video. If you want that, just comment below and ask for it and I'll send you a link in Google Drive um, because it's there and I make it for some of our staff who are learning about Ableton, who want to watch me do some Able Time stuff. Um, but this is, this is how I do this. Now, um, before we move on to the next video, because I'm already running long, and so we'll finish this soon, I want to show you how I get stuff into Session View. So this is really how I run tracks for the most part. Two. Vamp. Two. Three. So I want to point out something that's happening right now, and this is this is one reason why I love Session View. These tracks are counting down to zero. And these tracks right here are looping indefinitely. And Session View gives me the opportunity to control how those things work. And I think that is super cool. And so what's happening is we're going to play this first song. And when it's over, the pad and the click are just going to keep on clicking and, and padding on. And someone's going to come and probably do a welcome right here. And whoever's playing keys or guitar, we're just going to keep chilling on this song as it ends. And the song is going to end, it's going to fade out, and this is going to continue to go because I've told it to loop. You can see right there, and the click says loop. And this, no, no warping, no looping. It's just going to play. It's just a track. So I'm firing this master scene. These tracks are going to play. They're going to count down. These are never going to stop until I stop everything. And now, in number two, I made just one with the, the tempo and the key of the next song. So we're moving to C, and we're going to do 3-4, so we're going to move in probably to like a generosity moment. People are going to come forward. We're going to receive that moment of generosity, and this is just kind of for keys to play. And when we're ready to actually fire Hallelujah here below, I'm just going to fire this, and it's going to fire. My computer's mad at me because I'm pushing it too hard. But you can see right there, it's just going to fire and everything's going to work. It's going to do seamlessly because of one other thing that I'll show you before I forget. And that is this thing right here, which is the global quantization. And I use it on one bar. And that means that either if I hit it exactly on the downbeat, it will change. And if not, it's going to wait till the next downbeat, the next full measure one to go again. And so I like doing it that way because um, reasons. And I'll show you that in another video, the next video on the template, how I run this live. But I just wanted to show you, this is session view. This is arrangement view. Another quick tip, if you want to get back to this and play audio, you look how it's all messed up. You got to hit this button and you got to hit this button. Remap audio or reset audio and remap automation. Now, how do I get things into session view? That's a good question. And this is the last thing I'll hit on this video. Uh, next video, part two, we'll cover how I actually run tracks live and some tips and tricks on doing that. I will leave you with this. This was a great thing that I learned that uh, I don't even remember how I learned this, but this is, this is confusing. Some people will just take their tracks and drag each one into this view. Um, but I build all my tracks in arrangement view, so I have everything that I want. If I want to go, like here's a section that I cut. We'll talk about that next video. Getting ahead of myself. Let's just say I wanted to take Ain't No Grave. I'm going to go right here to just an empty scene. And I'm going to take my loop selector here. I'm going to grab the part of the track that I want. We'll just say I want the whole track. Now... I'm going to right click and everything's selected. I'm going to right click and say consolidate time to new scene. And it's going to take all those tracks and it's going to create a scene in session view. It's not really linked to this anymore. It's just copying them over. 
but it's super handy and super easy. And if you want to run tracks in arrangement view and session view, this is the way to go. So now when I hit tab and go back over here, you can see here's that click and here's that guide. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it not to warp, which makes it not loop. I'm going to tell it not to warp, which makes it not loop. And now I need to rename this command R and we'll say ain't no grave. And that is 74 BPM semicolon 44. So there's ain't no grave. Now, if I wanted to uh, just grab this, I could just, I could hit option and just copy this. Now, One, two, now we got MIDI click. Intro, two. Easy peasy. This click's never going to end because it's set to loop. And this one is going to end. Again, you can see it's got that much time left. This one's just looping measure by measure. For me, this is a, the, the beauty of Session View is it gives me a lot of flexibility. A lot of times I'm on stage playing an instrument, and so I need that flexibility to uh, go to, to dump to these sections that are maybe just click. If I need to get back here, I can easily do that. If I was just in Arrangement View, I would have to build these really long interludes with click and pads. That's fine. You can do that if you want to. I just don't. Um, but I do run things out of arrangement view sometimes, so I like to have flexibility. For me, it's all about flexibility. That is the name of the game for me when it comes to Ableton. So next time, we'll talk about how I actually run tracks with this and, and give you some real-world examples. Um, again, if you want to if you want to watch me make this for 30 minutes, send me a message or a comment below or get in touch with me. I'll send you a Google Drive file. You can watch me do Able Time for half an hour if that makes you happy. But again, I'm putting everything in Arrangement View. I'm building this just like I could run it in Arrangement View, and I build it like I can run it in Session View. Is this redundant? Yes, it is, but it gives me flexibility and it gives me options, and that's what I want. I want options. I want all the options available to me so I can make those choices. Some people have multiple rigs. Um, I know the guys at Elevation do this where they've got one rig that's running an arrangement that's the master, and then they've got one that's slave to that that has everything broken into sections. We'll talk about that too. Right now, none of these songs, except for a couple of looping sections, there's not really broken up into sections. I'm not really using it like that. If we go into flow moments, we're going to go to this, or I'm going to come around and find where I want to, to punch in in arrangement view. And so a lot of that happens just with planning. But yes, it's redundant. Yes, you could do this just in arrangement view. I like session view. My Novation Launch Key Mini is awesome for this. I've set up all these different things. I have lots of buttons set up to, to mute and unmute things and change uh, frequencies of things to fire tracks on the master. I have a lot of flexibility in Session View, and I like it. But if I didn't have these in Arrangement View and someone said, oh, hey, can we go to the... Uh, you know, this part of Sea of Victory, and I want to work on this interlude section, then, I, then I've got it pulled up right there. Chorus. And now we're back in the chorus, right? If I had this in session view, you really can't scrub, okay? That's the downfall of session view in a lot of ways. When you put full tracks in here, you fire them or you stop them. So if you're halfway through the song and you had to stop because your drummer dropped his stick or your guitar player broke a string, if you stop the track, it's not going to work anymore. And so for me, having the flexibility of I have all this in arrangement view, I can see everything, I can make tweaks, I can make changes, I can warp things, I can change tempo and keys, and I have them in session view this is my final performance mode when hopefully we're not going to mess that up. And if we do, there's a problem. And if there's a problem, I can jump over here and fix it. Um, so next, next video, I'll talk a little bit more about how I run this live. And then we'll also talk about my newest template that I just finished this week uh, with busing options for outputs 
and keys routing for live key sounds. I hope this video was helpful. We'll go in depth about some of these actual things about MIDI stuff, about how we how I made this. We can go in depth about that in a future video, but I just wanted to give you an overview of the template that I use, why I use this, because I route nine channels of outputs and, and I want to keep things consistent and that I use arrangement view and session view. They are not at war with each other. They are buddies that don't really talk to each other, but I use them both because I have them both. That's the beauty of Ableton Live. I'm going to use it to its full extent. Um, so uh, thanks for checking out this video. I will see you next time for part two 